Hi guys! In this lesson, I will show you how to basically measure resistance, voltage, and current with a digital multimeter. These measurements are used in electrical panels and many other places for fault detection. By the end of this lesson, you will have learned how to make these measurements. Digital multimeters are measuring devices that can measure quantities such as voltage, current, and resistance. The measured values are displayed on a digital display and allow easy and direct reading, even by first-time users. Many other measurements can be made with multimeters. Digital multimeters have a function switch. Whichever measurement we are going to make, we need to bring this switch to that function. For example, if we are going to measure current, we bring it to the current function. There are two probes and we plug them into the probe inputs. The black probe is plugged into the common input that says COM. The red probe is attached according to which measurement we will make. Let's start with how to measure resistance. When measuring resistance, we must first turn the function switch to the ohm function. Then we need to attach the red probe to the ohm part. Thus, the multimeter is ready to measure. When we touch the two ends of the probes to the two pins of the resistor, we can measure the resistance value. The resistance we measured here was 1 kilo ohm. We see 1k omega on the multimeter display. Since there is a tolerance value of 5% or 10% in resistors, we can see low or high values in these ratios. We should pay attention to the following while measuring the resistance. We must measure the resistance we are going to measure individually. If it is on the circuit, we should take it out and measure it that way. If we try to measure on the circuit board, we may see incorrect results. Because the resistance of other circuit elements can also affect the resistance measurement. Now let's look at how we do the voltage measurement. In the same way, we must turn the function switch to the volt function. We must attach the probes to the volt section in the same way to measure the voltage. Let's make the measurements on the circuit where two resistors of 1 kilo ohm and 1.5 kilo ohms are connected in series. These resistors are fed with a 9 volt voltage source. Let's measure on each resistor. Since they are connected in series, the voltage falling on each resistor is proportional to the resistance values. When we measure the voltage on the 1 kilo ohm resistor value, we see the value of 3.63 volts. What we need to pay attention to here is to connect the multimeter in parallel. This is how voltage measurement is done. When we measure the voltage on a 1.5 kilo ohm resistor, we can see the value of 5.4 volts. We have seen that in series connected resistors, a small voltage drops on a small resistor and a large voltage drops on a large resistor. When we measure the voltage across two resistors, we measure the source voltage value. Since we connected a 9 volt power supply, we measured 8.97 volts, which is very close to it. For example, when we want to measure the voltage of a battery, we can measure the voltage value when we touch the multimeter parallel to the battery poles. What we need to pay attention to here is that the function switch is in the DC volt level. If we are going to make an AC measurement, we need to set the function switch to the AC volt range. The value we will see in the AC measurement will be the effective value. If we connect the red probe to the negative pole and the black probe to the positive pole, that is, reverse the probes, we will see a negative value on the screen. Since voltage and current values are vector quantities, they have a direction. Therefore, it is always useful to connect the red probe in the direction of the current. We could also do an open circuit test with a voltmeter. If we see zero volts when we measure the voltage on the load, we can say that there is an open circuit in that circuit. For example, there is no current in the circuit because there is an open circuit state due to a break in the circuit here. Therefore, the voltage value measured over the load is measured as zero volts. Finally, let's look at how the current measurement is made. While measuring the current, we should turn the function switch to milliamp or amp function. If we are going to measure small currents, we should set it to milliamps. If we are going to measure large currents, we should set it to amp function. In the same way, we should attach the probes to the appropriate part. On the left, you see a multimeter ready to measure milliamps, and on the right, a multimeter ready to measure amps. If we cannot predict the magnitude of the current we will measure, we must first measure at the amp stage. If we cannot see a value on the screen, then we should measure at the milliamp level. Because if we accidentally try to measure a large current value in the milliamp range, we may damage our multimeter. We must pay attention to this. While measuring current, 
we must connect the multimeter in series with the circuit, as here. Here we tried to measure the total current through two resistors connected in series, that is, the main branch current. Serial connection is also like this. We should open the part where we will measure the current and connect the multimeter in series there. It can confuse the serial connection while many friends are making it. Care must be taken to make the correct connection. We can better understand how the serial connection is made through the drawing here. This is the circuit that was installed on the breadboard a while ago. The main branch current can be measured by connecting the ammeter in series in this way. We can also do a short circuit test with an ammeter. If we see the value of zero amps when we measure the current passing through the load, we can say that there is a short circuit in that circuit. For example, in the circuit here, the current does not pass through the load, but through the cable that causes the short circuit on it. Therefore, the current is measured as zero amps, since no current will flow from the point we measure. This is basically how to measure resistance, voltage, and current with the digital multimeter. Now you can make resistance, voltage, and current measurements in your own work in this way. I hope it was helpful and you liked it. Hope to see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.